Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing CVS Pharmacy stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. CVS is the largest pharmacy chain in the US by locations and total prescription revenue. The company is headquartered in Rhode Island and was founded in 1963. It went public in 1984 and currently trades on the New York Stock Exchange. CVS sells prescription drugs and a wide assortment of general merchandise, including over-the-counter drugs, beauty products and cosmetics, film, seasonal merchandise, greeting cards, and convenience foods through their CVS Pharmacy and Long Drugs retail stores. They also sell online at CVS.com. It also provides healthcare services through its more than 1,100 minute clinics, as well as their diabetes care centers. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 89 billion market cap. They're trading at $68 a share, and they have 1.3 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They've been doing a really good job at growing their free cash flow from 6 billion all the way up to 13 billion. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's pretty steady. It was negative in 2018. Revenue is a sales for the company. And that's also growing a lot from 180 billion to 270 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. Their gross profit is growing each year from 28 billion to 49 billion. Below that is operating expenses. Then below that is operating income. That's also growing from 9.5 billion to 14 billion. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt, and that also seems to be going up. It was $1 billion in 2017, now it's closer to $3 billion. Below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments or other non-operational gains and losses. Below that is pre-tax income, then their taxes. The company has really strong net income, over $7 billion. The only reason they had negative net income in 2018 was this large asset impairment. An asset impairment is a non-cash item, so it doesn't affect cash flow. I would focus on operating income when I look at the income statement, because the things below that are not part of your everyday business, especially something like an asset impairment, which is not a recurring item. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And the company has a lot of free cash flow each year, from 6 billion way up to 13 billion. Companies that generate a lot of free cash flow have the ability to pay a dividend, which this company does. It also makes it easier for them to pay down debt, which they did a lot of in 2019 and 20, and also to buy back stock, which they did in 2017. They did take on a lot of debt in 2018, but this was for an acquisition target. This is an article from 2018. It mentions CVS's $40 billion of debt to take over Aetna. Companies that generate a lot of free cash flow usually do not take on a lot of debt unless it's to buy another company. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. And this company generates a lot of operating cash flow, $8 billion up to $16 billion. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash. Net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. And to calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income. Then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. They pass through a $4.5 billion depreciation expense. That brings down their net income $4.5 billion. But it's a non-cash item, so we add it back here. They had $400 million in stock-based compensation and $3.2 billion in changes in working capital. Even though they reported a $7 billion profit, they actually generated $16 billion of cash flow. 
Let's look at the capital structure. $69 billion of equity, $85 billion of debt. They have 45% equity, 55% debt. Their net debt is $74 billion. Their WAC is 8%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $198 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $178 billion. We divide that by 1.3 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 136. They're trading at 68, so they're trading at a 50% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at 152, so they're also saying the stock is really undervalued. You can see the stock was trading over $100 five years ago, but it looks like it keeps coming down. For the past two years, it's pretty steady. It hasn't really moved too much. It did go up and down, but I guess investors don't realize the value of this company. Even if you find a company that's generating a lot of free cash flow and a lot of revenue, it doesn't mean the stock will go up. Investors need to buy the stock to push the price higher. If investors don't buy the stock, the stock won't go up. They've been paying a 50 cent dividend for a while. Their dividend yield is about 3%, and they pay out 37% of their net income, 20% of their free cash flow. CVS has gone up 6.4% in the past 52 weeks. The S&P 500 went up 17% in the same time frame. The 52 week low was 52, the high was 77, and the stock is trading above its 200 day, but below its 50 day moving average. About 7 million shares are traded each day on this stock. All the shares outstanding are on float, 78% are held by institutions, and 1.3% of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd be at $25,000 today. That's almost a 10% annual return. The biggest shareholder is Vanguard at 8%, then BlackRock, State Street, Capital Research, and Morgan Stanley. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market's nine, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 12.4, so investors are paying $12.40 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.3. Investors are paying 30 cents for $1 revenue. That's a really good price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.3. That's also a really good ratio. To calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have 69 billion of equity, negative 41 billion of tangible equity, because they have 110 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can cover their interest payments five times. ROE is net income over equity. They have a 10% ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover 90% of their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are 10 billion of cash, 21 billion of receivables, and 18 billion of inventory. Assuming they have similar free cash flow in 2021 as they did in 2020, they should be well capitalized. $13 billion of free cash flow negative 5.6 billion working capital and a 2.6 billion dollar dividend payment so they should have over 5 billion dollars of funding the best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies i've done videos of anthem cigna and united health group all in the same industry as cvs and if cvs has a number in green they're better than the average if they have a number in red they're worse than the average so they're better in all the price multiples they're not doing good in current ratio because they're below one they have the lowest ROE, the highest percent of debt, they have the second biggest market cap of the companies, and they pay the biggest dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 50% discount. This is a giant of a company, so I don't think there's much concern of them going away. Investors may fear the high amount of debt they have, but it's only 55% of their capital structure. I ranked their free cash flows 9 out of 10. It doesn't get much better than this. I ranked their revenue 8 out of 10 and I ranked their ratio 7 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.